Let's see how well this can heat up. This. And this is in response to the skeptical people in the comments of the last video saying, heat pumps can't heat up hot water. Does the hot water get hot enough? Is it really possible? Oh, you've got to use an immersion heater. So let's see how hot I can set this to and how quickly it gets there. Okay, if I go into my system view, you can see after a couple of showers this morning, the domestic hot water temperature is currently showing 27 degrees and the heat pump should just be on idle, consuming the, the uh, six watts that it does when it's doing nothing. And the temperature probe in this cylinder is like most cylinders. You're not gonna be able to see it, are you? Can you see the pocket there? Yeah, so it's about a third from the bottom. Okay, let's set this to go. Right. What should we pick here? Well, the concerns were, can it get it to 55 degrees? How about if we set it, not to 55, not to 60, but 65 degrees C. Should we see what happens? Just so you can see, I've turned that switch off. That's the immersion element. So any of the heating that is done right now is not being done with the immersion. This is all being done by the heat pump. Can it get to 65 without any assistance? And because of stratification, we'll see the top of the tank will be a lot warmer. So that'll be that sensor that's in the pocket, a third of the way from the bottom, will be reading 65 degrees once this cuts off. Okay, and the time is 12.20. It's about 12.20 when we start the cycle. So let's also see how long it takes to get from 27 degrees all the way up to 65 degrees, if it's even possible to get to 65 degrees without the immersion element. I'll check back in with you in 10 minutes. Okay, so it's been nearly half an hour, got stuck on a work call. Let me show you where we're at. Right, domestic hot water temperature, 47 degrees, flow temperatures at 56.5. The heat pump is now pulling 2,131 watts. And if I have a little look here on my sun sink. So the roof is currently generating five kilowatts. So we're sending roughly half of that to the grid and half of that is being used by the heat pump. So it's a free little recharge and we are up to 47 degrees. So let's give it another 10, 20 minutes. Let's see how much higher it... it's gonna to have to work hard now to bring the domestic hot water up and increase the flow temperature enough to be able to do that and transfer it. But of course that's 47 degrees recorded at the pocket, the temperature probe pocket in the cylinder. Okay, so it's exactly an hour since I sent, set this going. And as you can see, the domestic hot water temperature is at 60.5 degrees and flow temperature at 70 degrees. But the current power consumption has dropped right down. And if I go over to my inverter, it's showing the whole house is only pulling. Oh, hang on, it's starting to pull more. Did the, uh, did the heat pump just have a little bit of a break? I was thinking for a second, maybe the heat pump will only take it to 60 degrees. Maybe it won't take it to 65 degrees. Maybe I'll have to use the immersion for that. Let's see. It's been one hour anyway. We've taken it from 20 something degrees, 27 degrees was it? Up to 60 degrees and it's had a little pause. There we go. The current power consumption has just shot back up. Okay, so yes. Right. We'll see what this, here we go. Right, so the flow temperature dropped down to 65.5, but the, um, sorry if I'm wiggling the camera around like a madman, but the domestic hot water temperature has gone up to 61.5. Let's see if it can reach that 65 degrees. It's running absolutely flat out. And the side benefit is if I'm stood in front of this fan, it's air conditioning outside. It is nice and freezing cold, but I'm stood in the airflow, maybe you can hear it, maybe you can't, but it's pretty, pretty much silent. Okay, I don't know what's gone on here. It will not let it get high enough. So 
if there's someone smarter out there with valent uh, heat pumps, then please let me know what I'm doing wrong. So I adjusted the domestic hot water to temperature up to the maximum allowable, which was 70 degrees. I checked the cylinder cycle time on my, um, on my controller, my Senso Comfort controller. That was set to 120 minutes and it still hasn't been 120 minutes, so it shouldn't have cut out there. I've gone back onto the app and I've, um, I clicked X on hot water boost and then I restarted it again. But um, if you see in here, domestic hot water is set to 70 degrees. And um, it's just not, it's just given up trying. It's not drawing any power. You can see 11 watts power being drawn and the domestic hot water is set to 64 degrees. Now, is this test a failure? Well, not really, because I did set out to show that the hot water cylinder connected to a heat pump could easily reach the 55 degrees if you need really hot water. Possibly it can reach 60 degrees. Well, I thought maybe let's push the limit and push the boundary. The app lets me select 70 degrees. My particular setup hasn't got to that. It's got to 64 degrees. It did that quite some time ago. So we're at two o'clock now. So it's been just over an hour and a half, but um, I'll show you some, I'll go back to my computer, I'll show you some of the data from my solar inverter and show you how efficient and how much energy we've actually used to achieve this. Okay, what do we learn from it? Here's a little bit of the data. Let's have a start with the Valent app here. So these are just two screenshots that I've pulled from the Valent app. This shows the hot water, uh, the electrical consumption for the hot water generation. So you can see my cycle in the early hours of the morning on the cheap rate, and you can see the energy that's produced. So this is the actual hot water that's generated. And then you can see over um, on these later bars you can see you know what time i started it you've seen the footage um you can see the electrical consumption and then you can see the hot water generated and interestingly you can see that the first hour 12 to 1 used almost the same amount of electricity as 1 to 2 but look at the discrepancy here look at how much hot water is generated so it's showing you that as the flow temperature increases it becomes less efficient in the process that it's going through. Anyway, we know ultimately it just dropped off the cliff and stopped generating. But importantly, if we look at the total figures here, we've generated 10.9 kilowatt hours of hot water, the energy that's gone into it, and we've used 3.4 kilowatt hours of electrical energy. So that gives us a cop of 3.2 for today. So our morning cycle, I think, was 3.7, and then this ramping up high temperature has brought that average down from 3.7 down to 3.2 because it's using so much more power and you can see it went all kind of guns blazing even in the first hour well i say first hour this is the first 40 minutes really 12 because it was about 12 20 up until one o'clock you can see it used a huge amount of power compared to in the early hours of the morning and if i now bring in some data from my solar inverter you can see the uh, green area is uh, all of the solar generation. The yellow area is all of the energy that's been exported. And the red area is my electrical consumption for the household. And my inverter gives me this data at five minute intervals. OK, so you can see where it starts to ramp up at about 1220. And then you can see that it's pretty consistent all the way through until about one about 20 past one it was almost about an hour when it started tailing off and started dropping off and you'll you you've already seen what temperatures we were getting to in the flow temperature but then you can see this weird little zigzag where it's cycling the heat pump on it's not really increasing the flow temperature much and then it's cycling off and then cycling on and then cycling off and in the end it had just given up completely so um, if I bring this in here, it gives you a little bit more of a um, idea. This is perhaps more useful to look at the time because you can see then that at our peak, we were consuming 2,659 watts. And uh, you can see that my PV crept up to nearly 7 kilowatts. Um, coinciding with it kicking back on at 2,300 watts. 
Um, but you can see it was fairly consistent. So it started ramping up there. It says 12.15, 12.20 when we started ramping up and then it was broadly um, quite consistent. So from this, we have all learnt valent heat pump. It can heat the water up to over 60 degrees. We didn't quite make the 65 or 70 that we were aiming for. It doesn't need immersion. That's an important point for a lot of people. We've proved that it it can go way beyond what you would ever need. I mean, 64 degrees, that's scalding temperature. So it's not a safe uh, hot water storage temperature unless you're using taps that are really going to blend that temperature down quite considerably. And I hope this has been helpful to all of you out there in the rest of the world, um, whether you're cynical or not. I hope this is this actual real world experiment and real world data can show you that it can be done and it's not actually impossible. And if you ever see someone saying that the water isn't hot enough when it comes to hot heat pumps and how they generate hot water, you can now point to this video and show them that that is disinformation or at the very least it's misinformation. Thanks for watching. Come back for another one.